Denmark came back two months later and made the same plan, same announcement. We announced together with the government in Denmark, with the electric company in Denmark as our local partner. Denmark made sure you understood. Their difference is not 60%, it's 180%. You pay 180% tax on a gasoline car, zero on zero emission. So your average Toyota Corolla is $60,000. The average electric car is $20,000. If you can't get that, they basically tell you you should go to Norway and <laughs> buy it somewhere else. The policy is extremely simple. Now, we see that policy coming up again and again and again in other countries. France put 3,000 euro on gas guzzlers tax and minus 5,000 euros if you're going electric. Why? Because they said, we're going to accelerate it even faster. In France, when you get these rebates, our plan works with a three-year subscription to the network. By the way, we're not making 1,000 or 10,000. We're making them in mass production, mass volume. Renault-Nissan, just for your information, has already put a billion dollars into that pr plan. They're making the cars, and they're now making the batteries as well. We have batteries that are fitting this model. We know how to exchange them. The exchange works in Renault. It takes less than a minute. They're licensing it to other car companies, by the way. They're not keeping it to themselves. And we're, we argued a year and a half ago whether we will do 20,000 or 50,000 cars a year. The arguments right now at Renault are no longer in tens of thousands. They're in hundreds of thousands, and there's a team that's arguing this will be the first car that will get to a million faster than any car they've ever done before. Why? It's simple math. How many cars can you give away? So that's where this revolution started. In every country we come to, we see a different set of policies. We see a different set of policy makers. The policy could be extremely simple. We are already seeing today at the municipal, at the state level in the US, a lot of initiatives where we see some rebates for plug-ins, for hybrids, for a variety of different cleaner emission cars. If we could consolidate some of these rebates, we can get to the same level at state municipal level already as what the French are doing at federal level. It's time to also plug in where we're hosting the, the private sector, a combination of private public policy where Companies like Microsoft, companies like Boeing, companies across the United States came up and said, we will give our employees the same incentive as the government would, a dollar for a dollar, to go electric. Would be fantastic. Better place will put the same incentive in plan. We'll match a dollar for a dollar. And if we did it together, we can get the same kind of conditions even with four and a half dollars a gallon. We don't need to get to nine dollars a gallon to make it more palatable. The fundamental economics are working for us. The battery cost, which everybody's pegging as too high, is $12,000 for a battery pack for a car. That battery will go for 250,000 miles. That is five cents a mile. The electricity cost for a mile is two cents if we use renewable sources, one cent if we don't use renewable sources. I'd rather use renewable sources. But together, it's seven cents a mile. Seven cents a mile, if you took a 25 miles per gallon, which is the average mix in the US, is one and a half dollar gallon. If anybody thinks we're going to see one and a half dollar gallon coming back from OPEC, think again. It's not coming back. And so we have electric gasoline that can be made in the US that can give us the equivalency of one and a half dollars a gallon here in volume. What are we missing? We need to wake up Detroit. Because if this transformation happens, and Detroit will make 60,000 cars a year, or 100,000 cars a year, or 200,000 cars a year, or a million cars a year, or <laughs> 2 million, or 10 million cars a year, we will miss Detroit at the end of this cycle. So we have to wake up Detroit. Detroit, in the auto industry in the US, stands for $1 out of every 10 in our economy. When that dollar disappears, the economy disappears with it. 
And so the question for us is one, how do we wake up Detroit? Two, how do we wake up the local policies? And three, how do we make batteries in the US? You see, all things being equal, if we left it right now and made no difference, no change, battery factories, nine out of 10 times, will be located in China. Why? Because I can build a battery factory in China that will go zero to full production in less than nine months. I can't get permits in the US in nine months. Now, this is national security. It's the reason why Jim is here. If we wait, we're going to get battery lines, queues, in China. And the Chinese, I can guarantee you, will take the batteries that they produce and first use them in China, because they don't have oil either. And we'll be in the back of the line waiting for a battery that's produced somewhere else. So this is time where you deploy the national balance sheet. How do you do it? You take the infrastructure project. You put the best brains in the government. You put them in a room for 30 days. We let them argue for 30 days. We televise some of it. <laughs> we, we even let people vote on SMS, which plan do they think is the best. But we come up with one plan. When we come up with that plan, we auction it off to regions. We don't want it to be one company. I don't want it to be only better place doing this. The problem is we're now the only guys. I'd rather be the first, not the only guys. We force standards. We force openness on the network. But what the government can do is come up and say, put the network in place. Within the next four years, we take the risk. What does that mean? If we need to put $100 billion of infrastructure in the ground, government can come up and say, we will secure that $100 billion that you put in. If you don't make the money back within 10 years after you put the infrastructure in the ground, whatever you lost, we'll take. As long as you were sensible, worked openly, made it according to standards for the entire country. We put $100 billion to play on a lot less sensible ideas right now. We go to Detroit and we say, we'll take $10 billion worth of risk off your hands. You build cars that fit this plan, we'll take the risk. If you don't sell enough to recover the R&D plan for these cars, we'll pay for it 10 years out. Government will give you a loan for that period of time. And we put the same plan for battery factories. We make sure we put the batteries in the factories here in the US so that we have our sources guaranteed for supply for the next decade to come. We do all these things. We not only create a solution for oil in the US, we created the next wave of, of industrial exports. Now, there's an interesting thing about that $100 billion we talk about. You can't outsource installation of infrastructure to another country. These are not jobs that are going to go to China. They're actually going to be here in the US. They're going to be down, done by people in the US, in the ground, in the US. So we have $100 billion, of which 80% is labor. That's an $80 billion economic stimulus package. And guess what? Every time we went into recession in our history, 150 years, we always came back with a major infrastructure project related to transportation or energy. Because those projects pay for a very long period of time. And if you're going into recession, they have a very low alternative cost. The alternative cost is paying unemployment to people. So we've got a plan that matches exactly the situation we have on hand, exactly what we need, and answers the biggest threat we got right now, oil dependence. Why is it the biggest threat? And I'll take you for a second to the macro picture. We've got three superpowers again in the world. Two of them don't have oil. The one that does is willing to use it as a power play. At the macro picture, we can't afford to stay in that situation. We've got to shift back away from liquid carbohydrates to start our transportation. It's not a choice that we can wait with. If I had a time machine, I wouldn't go back to ancient Rome. I wouldn't go back to watch any major Super Bowl. I would go back eight years and start this plan eight years ago. Thank you.